In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we gather in prayer this morning, look at this wonderful group of young people. Very happy to have you here. These are eighth grade students from Our Lady of Perpetual Help. And they're here today, I understand, as part of a day of retreat. Is this in preparation for your graduation? Is that correct? Okay, well, we welcome you and we're grateful that you're here. As we do gather as the church today, we find our church continuing to explore difficult early decisions. The gospel reminds us how much it is that Jesus loves us and he wants us to do that for each other. Lord Jesus, for the times we fail to remember that you chose us to be your disciples, Lord, have mercy. In Christ Jesus, for those times when we do not follow your commandments, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, for those times when we do not love and care for each other as you care for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, that being rightly conformed to the Paschal Mysteries, what we celebrate in joy may protect and save us with perpetual power. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles and presbyters, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the presbyters, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, of Gentile origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have, with one accord, decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey this same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. And so they were sent on their journey. Upon their arrival in Antioch, they called the assembly together and delivered the letter. When the people read it, they were delighted with the exhortation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will give you thanks among the peoples, O God. I will give you thanks among the peoples, O God. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and chant praise. Awake, O my soul, awake, lyre and harp. I will wake the dawn. 
I will give you thanks among the peoples, O Lord. I will give thanks to you among the Gentiles, O Lord. I will chant your praise among the nations, for your mercy towers to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. He exalted above the heavens, O God, above all the earth be your glory. I will give thanks among the peoples, O Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's <clears throat> life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and to bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. How many of us know somebody that we don't like? How many people don't like you and me on occasion? It's just real. And we're always asked to try to be kind and respectful to each other. This part of the story from the Gospel of John is connected to a few uh, verses ahead of this one, where Jesus reminds us that he is the vine and we are the branches, and that we must stay connected to Jesus. We must stay close to him. We must open our hearts to allow him to come inside of us and give us strength, give us courage, Give us the ability to make good and right decisions. And we can't do anything without him. And he continues to talk to the people about this. And he comes to this statement to the faithful, to his people, to his disciples. This is what I command you to do. You notice he doesn't say, well, if it's convenient it's okay to do it. He doesn't say, well, if it's a good day, be nice to somebody. He doesn't say, well, if it fits in with your plans for today, be nice, be kind. He doesn't ask us. He commands us to do this. It is not an option. So how is it that you and I, knowing that some people don't like us, and there are other people that we don't care for very much, that we're really asked to love them? Now, that doesn't mean love with just flowers and candy and music. It means love from the bottom of our hearts, when it's okay and when it's not okay. We have to try to do it 
every day. And some days are just much easier than others. Those of you who are at Our Lady of Perpetual Help, you're getting ready to be graduated from there and move on to the next level of your education. And I hope you can take this away as a part of your day of retreat. Stay close to the Lord. There are times when Jesus may seem so far away because we're upset about something. Our hearts are heavy with something. Maybe he's going on at home. Maybe our families are not getting along as well as we'd like. Maybe you didn't do as well on the last test as you wanted to do. Maybe some of you are going to go to different schools and you're going to miss each other. All of that's real. But stay close to Jesus. How many of you get on your Facebook, your Instagram, text, mail, te text and email and talk to each other? Show me. Come on, don't be shy and cheer. I, that was what I thought would happen, yeah. And you're talking to your friends, right? Is that true? Why don't you talk to Jesus that way? Now, Jesus does not have email or text or Twitter or Instagram, okay? But he's got two enormous ears and a huge heart, and he'd like to hear from you every day. Trust me. And maybe all you can say on a given day is, well, Jesus, I'm having a hard day. Help me be nice to somebody. Or Jesus, you know, I'm so lucky that my family loves me. I'm so lucky to have been able to go to school at Our Lady of Perpetual Help. I'm so excited about the summer and what's going to happen next year. Maybe a good thing when we talk to our friends, I hope that no matter what our age, we tell our friends thank you for hanging in there with us. There are days when we can't move too fast without knowing somebody cares about us. And our friends, as friends, we do that. So I'm encouraging you, as you try to stay close to the Lord, consider Jesus your friend. There's not anything you can't tell him that he, he won't accept. Now, some things that we admit, we're embarrassed about them because we've said something we shouldn't. We've made fun of somebody else. We've been hateful. We get in our little cliques and we don't want to deal with them because they aren't one of us. Jesus gets all that. And he loves us even when we make mistakes. So I'm encouraging you as you finish the eighth grade and you move on to the next part of your education, as much as you get on your, uh, our electronic materials, technology material, and you Twitter and talk and all that to your friends, spend a few minutes every day talking to Jesus. Tell him thank you. Tell him, hey, I need help here because I really can't stand that girl. And that boy is nothing but a jerk. Now, I know you don't have any jerks in your class, right? All near perfect. How many of you are angels? Nobody's an angel? Oh, come on. There you go. There you go. Come on, men. You can be angels too. There we go. Sure, we're just humans. And we make mistakes, and we, we mess things up. But our friend Jesus says to us, I love you, and I want you to love and care for each other as much as I love you. So we have a great command in front of us. And it's not just today. It's not just at graduation. It's not just next August when you go to whatever school you're going to go to. It is a command given to you and to all of us, 
even us old kids in here, that we are to try to care for each other and show respect for each other as much as Jesus does for us. Again, some days it's much easier than others, but it's not something that we can just say, oh, well, when I feel like it, I'll do it. How many of you sometimes ignore what your parents tell you? Come on, every hand should go up. I've been around a long time. I've heard a lot of confessions. Yes, sometimes we ignore our parents because we may think we're smarter than they are, for one thing. We may be embarrassed that we've done something that they won't be proud of us. And we don't want to admit that we goofed it up. But we're still loved. And as much as your parents love you, as best they can, Jesus loves you even more. So, we have a commandment in front of us. I want you to love and care for each other as much as I love and I care for you. It's a commandment that I hope that we keep close to our hearts 365 days a year. It is with confidence in a God who loved us so much that he sent us his son that we ask this God to receive our prayers. As friends of our beloved teacher, we pray, hear our prayer, God of life. Hear our prayer, God of life. For those newly received into the church, for a harvest of fruit that will last, we pray. Hear our prayer, God of life. For those who seek God, for a shared discovery of the command to love, we pray. Hear our prayer, God of life. For those who are sick or in need, for a divine response to what they seek, we pray. Hear our prayer, God of life, for those who have died, for the blessing of eternal friendship with God and all whom God has made. We pray, hear our prayer, God of life. Loving Father, we ask your blessings on this group of young people. They will always know your love for them and that each day they will do their best to follow you to be people of kindness and goodness. For you, we pray to the Lord. God of life, hear our Amen. prayer. We ask too, Father, that you receive the prayers that we hold in the quiet of our hearts. So we place them before you on this Easter day in the name of your risen Son, he who is Lord forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Let us pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> O Lord, graciously sanctify these gifts, and according and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with our patron saints, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <clears throat> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that with the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And I pray that the peace of the risen Lord will indeed be with each one of you. Amen. Let us offer each other now the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O Lord, we have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go now to glorify the Lord by our lives. <laughs>